So in this problem, we're solving an exponential equation that might not look like an exponential equation at first. Our goal is the same thing. It's to get the same base and uh, different exponents, preferably different exponents. It's the same exponent that any value is going to work. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, we want the same base on each side so we can set the exponents equal to one another. And there are several ways to go about uh, solving this particular exponential equation. I'm going to show two of those two of those ways and then our typical check. They should serve as a check of one another, uh, plus we'll have our, our normal check as well. So our first option is we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator on the left-hand side to get rid of the denominator. So when we multiply both sides by e to the x, then this left-hand side becomes e to the x squared, just what's left, e to the x squared. And then on the right-hand side, we have e squared times e to the x. And remember the product rule, we add these exponents. So e to the x squared equals e to the 2 plus x. We have the same base on both sides, which means we can make, uh, we can set the exponents equal to one another. So x squared equals 2 plus x. Let's move everything to the left-hand side so we have a quadratic equal to zero. So this becomes x squared minus x minus two equals zero. Now we factor or use the quadratic formula to factor since the leading coefficient is one. Remember we want what numbers multiply to negative two and add to negative one. Well, how about negative two and one? x plus negative 2 or x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. FOIL to make sure that uh, we factored correctly. So x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x minus 2 times x. So x minus 2x is negative x. And then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So it does multiply back to our original quadratic. So this means x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. Now let's look at a second method to solve this. We could simply use the, qu the, the quotient rule for the left-hand side. When we're dividing values with the same base, we subtract the exponent of the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So then our left-hand side would become e to the x squared minus x, and our right-hand side is still e squared. So then our bases are the same. That means we can set the exponents equal to one another. So x squared minus x equals 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, we get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. That looks familiar. That's the same equation we ended up with, but in less steps uh, as with our first method. So that's simply going to lead to the same two values, x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. So that helps us check. And now we'll go ahead and use our typical means of checking, and that's substituting into the original equation. So when x equals negative 1, we have e to the negative 1 squared over e to the negative 1, we want to know, does that equal e squared? Well, e to the negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is just 1, so this is e to the 1. Now we have e to the negative 1, that's going to come to the numerator and drop the negative, so that's going to be e to the 1 times e to the 1, does that equal e squared. Remember the product rule for exponents, same base, we add the exponents when we're multiplying the two values. So this is e to the 1 plus 1. So e squared equals e squared, and therefore x equals negative 1 checks. What about when x equals 2? So this becomes e to the 2 squared 
over e to the 2, we want to know, does that equal e squared? e to the 2 squared, that's e to the 4th, over e squared, does that equal e squared? Quotient rule, we subtract the exponents. So this is e to the 4 minus 2. We want to know, does that equal e squared? 4 minus 2 is 2, so we're left with e squared equals e squared. So our second value checks as well. So when e to the x squared over e to the x equals e squared, we know x equals 2 or x equals negative 1.